I'm Pete Schwartz, and we're going to be learning basic mechanics this quarter, Physics 141. Now, there's several things that we're going to do that's significantly different from the way physics is normally taught, especially at Cal Poly. And I want to describe those in this video, and that is how we teach concepts simultaneously, how we flip the classroom, and how we use online resources. And so, traditionally in physics, you build this beautiful pedagogy, step by step, starting with the equations of motion, such as speed and acceleration. Now, with that knowledge, you move on to forces. And then you can explore conservation of energy um, and conservation of momentum. And instead, we're going to introduce these concepts together on the first day and build in complexity, step by step, adding vectors, adding units, adding different kinds of computation challenges. So why do I do this? And it's worth explaining. I remember the last day of class, the last time I taught this, I said to the students, you know, there's really only four kinds of physics questions that we can ask on the final. Do you want to know what they are? And of course they wanted to know. And I said, yeah, it's just kinematics, dynamics, conservation of energy, and momentum. And then, of course, we do rotation, but with all these same concepts. And I thought, well, this is a hell of a time to be telling them this on the last day of class. Why not tell them on the first day of class? See, because the fundamentally most important aspect of solving a physics problem is identifying which of these you want to address. And we don't learn that in physics traditionally. We don't teach it because when you're studying forces, of course, all the questions are about forces. When you're studying conservation of momentum with collisions, like, of course, all the questions are on conservation of momentum. So you just go in and you say, oh, okay, uh, where are my momentum equations? Boom, boom, boom. And I solved the problem. And then you get to the final exam and you don't know which concept to use because you didn't practice identifying and working with the different concepts. And so this is a way we're going... And furthermore, everyone has some notion of velocity, of forces, of energy. For instance, you know, there's a big rock on the top of a hill, of a cliff. This has some kind of... Even if it's not moving, it has some kind of potential energy up there. We know that, and we know that given the right circumstances, that potential energy will turn to kinetic energy, moving very fast, that very fast rock, then can do all kinds of work on your little body and crunch it up. So we may not know those same words, but we have some idea how this works. And so what we're going to do is introduce these concepts, and then we're going to add the complexity together and do experiments with them. And I think this will better prepare us for a future in physics, future in engineering, any kind of technology. Flipping the classroom, what does that mean? Traditionally, we sit in a classroom and the instructor delivers the information to us. And then we go home by ourselves, usually, and work on problems to see if we understand this. And this is... I think this can be improved for two reasons. One is very few students stop me if I'm going too fast. And so I have to judge, okay, how fast can I teach these concepts? At home, uh, could you hold on a second, Pete? Hit the stop button, take some notes. Oh, I better go back and check it. So I can teach more to your own speed. Secondly, do you really want to go and do the problems all by yourself? Instead, we can come into the classroom, work in groups, which in and of itself is a very important skill. And the instructor's there, so when you run into a snag, you can say, hey, Pete, come over here. None of us are understanding this. And I can see that, and I can say, oh, okay, wait, wait. Now, I could talk to you as a group, or I could talk to the whole class, because I'm realizing a lot of people are having difficulty with this. So it's, I think it's an improved way of learning and prepares us better for learning in a working environment. Additionally, there are these studies that have shown it's just really, really good. And so, 
we're going to be flipping the classroom where a lot of your information is going to be, um, uh, a lot of the cons conceptual knowledge is going to be gained at home watching videos like this or reading. And most of the work is going to be done in the classroom within groups. Lastly, resources. So at Cal Poly, we use Randy Knight's textbook, um, A Strategic Approach to Physics, and it's a great textbook. I encourage you to buy it if you like, but we are not going to directly address that book. Instead, we're going to use this free online textbook from OpenStax that is uh, it's very well supported on the web, and we're also going to support that with different videos that, um, that you can provide or other students that are working with me. Um, if you are a physical book learner and you like to write in the book, I think it's a great idea, but you can buy this OpenStax book as well for 50 bucks, which is a whole lot cheaper than uh, the $300 that a normal textbook costs. And so these are differences in the way we're going to learn physics. What's going to be the same is I'm going to be here to help you, um, and you're going to work very hard. I look forward to this experience. Thanks.